All right, guys, hello and welcome to yet another patch analysis. This is something that I do every time there is a patch that has a major impact on the game. I provide my opinions and comments on changes that are going into the game and how it will affect the game in my opinion. Sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. Either way, people find this very interesting and have been asking a lot about it, so of course I'm going to do it. But first, let's sell out a little bit. Um... I am working on a mouse pad uh, that will be a slap mouse pad basically. It's a really cool design and it's going to be out in about one and a half months. So I'm letting you guys know it will be announced everywhere when it does come out. It's pretty fucking awesome. There's going to be a desktop version, really large. You can have under your keyboard, your arms, and your mouse. And there's going to be a large one just for your mouse pad. Mouse. Now, now that that sellout's done, let's get into the patch. Uh, we usually skip these. So UI. UI, I'm not going to read it, but uh, the UI is very old. The game has been out for, what, a little bit more than eight years now, and the UI has never been changed. It looks like... Han looks like an old game. It looks like it's from the 90s. It's very... Very old in terms of UI. So I'm happy that they're finally doing something about it. I haven't seen the changes, but I hope they're good. I do know that they're working on a complete rearrangement of the UI. They announced that a long time ago. So I'm hoping that when that comes, Han will actually look like, you know, a fresh and new game in the menu because that's one thing that I'm very disappointed in. They haven't fixed that. Now, backdoor protection system. I am very much against this. I've said that I've known about this change for a while. I don't believe that backdoor protection is necessary. It's been so incredibly long since we've had competitive games being completely decided based on backdoor. I don't know if you guys remember, but there's been tons of games between Sync Esports and Reason Gaming and uh, other uh, other pro players, sorry, pro, pro teams against each other where they've won due to backdoors. But it's been such a small margin that it's, yeah. Uh, at the same time, this will take away a lot of frustration with the game with heroes such as Silhouette. Silhouette is now no longer going to be picked at all. You picked Silhouette because she had the ability to actually backdoor and turn around the game uh, as well. But now that will no longer be... Like, now you can no longer pick Silhouette for that reason. So I do believe we're going to see less and less heroes that backdoor. Mage Bane is also a perfect uh, example. You can, of course, still split push side lanes, get your creeps with you. But either way, I don't believe that a backdoor protection system was necessary in the game at all, uh, whatsoever. But it's in here now. Um, and, well, we'll see how it works out. I don't really know what else to comment on it besides I don't think that it was necessary. It's here now. We'll see how it pans out. I don't know how it's going to affect the game too much because... I don't really think that the current meta is based around backdooring. Uh, there's really no strategies that are completely based about around cheesing and backdooring. So I don't think it will have a major meta change. Uh, it will just take some heroes out of the equation. Silhouette will literally not be picked anymore whatsoever. Um, either way, it's only 75 health per second. So, you know, late game when your carry has 300 damage or 250, you can still backdoor. So it doesn't completely remove the whole thing. It just removes the mid-game backdoor, you know, like mid-game when Silhouette has PKGO's no stone trunk and, you know, the tie build, she does 150 damage. You won't be able to backdoor, really. Keep in mind the armor from the um, tower as well. Now, this is one of these changes that I hate the most. I do not understand why the gold per minute change be... Well, let's just say it like this way. I believe the gold per minute change, change was implemented because casual mode is the most popular mode in Han and has been for a very long time, especially in Thailand. I don't know the percentage rate, but I do know it's very high. And possibly they want to bring some casual mode players over to normal mode, and that's why they increased the gold. I don't know, and I don't care because I think it's very stupid to increase the gold per minute from 69 to 100. This fundamentally changes the game in many different ways. There's a reason you pick junglers. Not only is it for the experience, it's also for the fact that you can get gold where you normally cannot. So you pick a jungler for the increased experience and for the increased gold that you get. Now that you increase the gold per minute by 31, that's a massive change. That's 50% added gold per minute on support heroes. That makes the double support and support lineups even more viable than they were before. And that's just not good in my opinion. It removes uh, inconsistency in drafts. It removes inconsistency in strategies because the good thing about having low GPM is the fact that you can have jungle strategies that bypass the stat because you can have another hero that isn't supposed to get gold get extra gold. So I personally am incredibly against this change. I don't know why it went in besides what I believe is the logical reason for it. 
and I'm yeah, I'm I'm against it. I don't really have much else to um, to say. It basically is a Merrick's bounty for every single hero, and for me, that's just stupid. So as a jungler, well, I haven't really wanted to jungle in the last year, so I don't really mind in terms of being a jungle player. But for jungle players out there, I think this is very bad for the game. And overall, I think it's bad for the game because it will remove competitive aspects. But from a public factor, maybe people will have more fun. I don't know. Default maximum speed limit increased from 522 to 550. I don't really see why that was necessary. Both this change as well as the gold per minute change basically tells me, oh, you want to lower the... the like the amount it takes to play a game of Han. But why? I mean, an average game of Han is about 25, 30 minutes. I don't think that needs to be lower. There's like no reason to do, to, to do that. So once again, it's changed. I don't feel necessary. Shot protection radius for the outpost increased from 500 to 600. Sure, whatever. Ally well now grants a bonus 150 move speed for 2.5 seconds, allowing you to travel away from the well faster. Garena ROV, League of Legends, same thing. Don't really see the point. Once again, increasing like lowering the amount of time it takes for you to um, to play the game. Not by a lot, but you know, like if you add all the changes on top of each other, they're trying to lower the time it takes to play a game. Um, okay, uh, automated courier. Movement speed towards your hero increased from 522 to 550. Time designation increased from 70 to 15. It's courier transmission found to the middle of the river in the middle lane. Once again, lowering the time it takes to play the game and get your items. Movement speed towards your well, hero, wait, what? Oh yeah, with the courier. Okay, so allowing you to get your items faster. Once again, don't see the point of it at all, to be honest. I think the courier speed was fine. In particular, be because like the, the individual couriers on every hero fundamentally changed the game as well, allowing junglers to have an incredibly easy time because before you would steal the mid's courier, or before, like, I, I remember talking about this because I was very disappointed about the individual couriers, right? <clears throat> as a jungle player, you weren't able to use the courier all the time. You had to wait for your mid to get a bottle. You had to wait for your often to get more regen. <coughs> and when they implemented the individual couriers, they also sped up the game. They also made every single hero be able to just send out regen all the time, all the time, making laning phase even more crucial, making power heroes even more crucial, which is why we only see heroes that are amazing in lane nowadays. Because heroes that are amazing in lane can just keep buying regen. So I, once again, trying to lower the game time in Han don't see the point of it. They already fucked things up about Han, in my opinion, with the individual couriers. I didn't think that was necessary, and now they're making it even worse, trying to increase the time span once again, making it even easier to send region once again. Another change that is not necessary, do not appreciate it or like it. Next up, Aluna Red no longer has charges when activated. Any ability cast within 10 seconds for time frame is powered up like they currently are, with the exception of power throw. See below activating Emerald Red grants 0 1 2 charges of power throw. These instances of Power Throw are free to cast as long as Emerald Red is active. So Power Throw still has a current boost properties when powered up by Emerald Red. So this is actually pretty awesome. You can do two like um, across the map charges in a very short time span. Alternatively, it deals full damage. So I don't know what the reasoning was for removing the charges because I personally think Aluna was fine as she was. I think she was very good, and I don't see any didn't see any reason to change her. But she wasn't picked. So it could be a change to try and actually make her viable into the game and boost her power ability a little bit. Overall, I don't really know how this is going to work out. It sounds very interesting on paper. I think it's cool that you can do like double power throws uh, within the 10 second time frame. Um, so yeah, no, I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, how, however, it also might seem a little bit strong being able to use all your abilities with one charge. But well, I don't know, we'll see. So basically, at level uh, 16, you can power uh, power throw three times. <laughs> and if you're resto, you can power throw six times, right? Actually, no, that's not how resto works, because it needs to charge up. Still funny. Well, yeah, either way, interesting. We'll see how it works out. Um, so she's basically turning into more of a semi-carry, which is what they've been doing for a while anyway, to be honest. I mean, she went from a support to more of a semi-carry with the recent changes with the attack speed, and now they're doing it even more. So maybe they want her to carry in the same way as Pyro now is a carry, which we'll get to in a second. Now, Bramble reworked again. Yay! All right. Uh, target location to launch upon the line hitting all enemies and allies deals 71, 25 damage while healing allies for 25. So it's like a Behe stun with low cooldown, low mana cost, damaging and heals allies, high mana cost, pretty much. Okay. Interesting. 
Activate leave a trail behind you for six seconds, grant to yourself and allies 30, 60, 90, 120 move speed while they're on the trail. Each part of the trail remains on the ground for four seconds after spawning. So speeding up your team in the way of an energizer. Okay. Chomp. When off cooling, your attack chomps a target dealing 4, 6, 8, 10% of Bramble's max health as bonus magic damage. Oh. Wait, what? So this is like a gladiator in Sanitarius ability. No, well, not really. That's a bad comparison, but... Wait. No, you don't lose this. No, no, no. It is gladiators, pretty much. Yeah, this is pretty much gladiator's whip, except single target. Hmm. So let's say late game when you're tanky, every six seconds you'll have a 200 damage increase um, if you have 2,000 HP. So And you always go Frostwolf from Bramble, so you're going to have 2,000 HP about 30 minutes into the game. So 30 minutes into the game approximately, you'll have a 200 damage auto attack. Plus 235, plus your ulti. Okay. I don't really know what to say. Well, uh, I mean, it looks... It, the, the rework looks... More, more as well as a, sort of a semi carry, doesn't it? Increasing the damage as well, cooldown lowered. Um, overall, it looks interesting. Um, will it be OP though? No, right? Ultimate cooldown got changed quite heavily. Hmm. I remember back in the days when Bramble was originally released, the movement speed slow from the ultimate was way too much. I don't know if 40, 50, 60 will be, and the attack range was increased as well. I know, it kind of seems a little bit OP. I mean, 15 damage per wall, per vine, I mean, plus the 10%. Um, feels like Bramble has a little bit too much uh, damage uh, looking at the numbers, but we'll see. But personally, looking at numbers, it feels like he has a little bit too much damage. Um, but, I mean, we have a lot of heroes who ask that now, right? I mean, Bombardier, etc., etc. Feels bad, man. Now, Cthulhu Font, obviously previously a jungle hero. Strength gain massively increased. Mana cost increased, cooldown increased, and no longer stops when Cthulhu Font touches the cliff. So it's basically a Magnus stun now. Magnus damage from launch non-hero unit changed, so it does less damage now. Travel speed increased from 800 to 1000, so it's a very fast Magnus stun now. Uh, obliterate rework, that's his ultimate. Activate a shoot a pulse of water in front of Cthulhu Font every 4 seconds. Damage from each pulse starts at 30, 40, 50, 60 magic damage and deals an additional... Whoa. Max total magic damage 2, 300, 400, 500. Oh, okay. That's a lot of damage. What's the mana cost? 90, 100, 110, 120. 600 radiance, 200 radius, so about... Yeah. Okay. Whenever you take non dot physical damage, you deal physical damage equal to the attack of 25 heroes to one strength for non hero units. Huh. So this will be your jungle ability, basically, if you're still able to jungle. So let's think about this. We start off with. Actually, let's just do this. This is easier. Where's Cthulhu Font? Cthulhu Font starts off with 24 strength, right? If you start with 24 strength, you can increase that a little bit. Um, so that's only fucking 5 damage per second at level 1. Times 3, so 15 damage per second level 1. If you increase a little bit, so about 16 damage per second level 1, we should say. Then it gets 3.5 per level. Okay, so 15 magic damage per second level 1, that's like Sephir, a little bit less. Sephir has 16 because he has 8 times 2 level 1. So Sephir 8 times 2 level 1, this guy has uh, 16 as well. So Sephir and Cthulhu has the exact same amount of damage to creeps, neutral creeps level 1. So you can still jungle him. And then if you stack, you can use your pulse to kill it really, really fast. I don't really feel like you want to max out Edo. I feel like this hero will be better off in a lane now. Um, and I feel like you kind of want to farm him. Like, get him tanky early, like, get him a lot of... And I kind of feel like a, an Insanitarius build due to the E here is pretty fucking insane. But I don't know. No, not really. Okay, ultimate. Uh, actually, again, R of 6 second, plus 20, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, so you use your ulti, you apply your pulse, and then you stun. That's a lot of, a lot, a lot of damage. 
Interesting. Uh, I tried, you can still jungle. Yeah, no, no, you definitely can. I mean, that's what I see. It's 16 damage level 1, right? Um, which is pretty much Sephir. So you're going to be able to farm as fast as Sephir and then faster the later you go. Um, yeah. So we'll definitely try, try it out. The hero on paper looks very OP. Like, I'll tell you that. Very, very OP. So I will definitely try him out as fast as I can, obviously, since he is a jungle hero originally, and I'm still a jungle player. So we'll try him out on paper. He looks OP. The first heroes look OP on paper so far. I mean, at least we won't have another Nighthound. <laughs> or maybe Cthulhu will be. Um, so yeah, 150% damage against non-hero units later. Whenever you take non-dot physical damage, you deal physical damage to the to the attack equal to 50% total one strength. So you have 100 strength and 150%. Wow. Wait, how does the math work here? Does it actually work um, like I calculated it? Or does it work in another way? It, it works in a way 150%, right? It's like 60%, 90%, 120%, 150, right? It doesn't work like our double rift charts. I'm sure it doesn't work like double rift charts. That would be retarded. Anyway, let's continue. Adrenaline, hero sucks balls now. Good job. Okay, fractures have been replaced with Ember Shards. Ember Shards are illusions which have a distinctive look, take 400% damage, deal 10% of your base damage, have 800 attack range, cannot move and attack only up to 3 times. Ember Shards also have a vision of the target they're attacking. Cooldown increased from 80, 70, 60 to 180, 60. Fractures have been replaced with Ember Shards. So you no longer have the, like, how much do they do? Deal 10% of your base damage. 10%. So instead of the nuke that we have right now on Adrenaline, you're going to get a 10% base damage auto attack? Are you kidding me? Wow. Hero looks garbage now. Like, honestly, this hero has always been countered by Storm Spirit and Shrunkens, right? But the thing is, he got very fat early and was able to take over games due to his Shard Blast in lane. But if they take that away, then what the hell does this hero do? No, still the nuke? Oh, okay, my bad. Okay, 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 my bad. So you still have the nuke. Okay. I understand. Okay, okay, never mind then. The chains to illusion only. Yep, understood. Understood, my bad. Okay. 1800 attack range. Come and I'll attack up three times. Okay, we're going to have to see this in game then. Um... The religions just don't run towards the enemy. Yeah, but they don't run towards the enemy, but they have 1800 attack range. So they're pretty much going to hit every time, right? Or am I being stupid? 1800 attack range. I mean, how do they miss? They can't. And it also gives vision. That's what I mean. Does anyone is anyone from SPT here? How does it work? But you can go in fog and it can't attack? No, you can't. Have vision. Please tell me I'm wrong. The ulti won't stack for easy double dashes. Okay. It's a buff now. It seems like a buff, unless I'm being stupid. They cannot attack. Sorry, they, they, they cannot move, but they have 1,800 range. They give you vision, but they can only attack three times. So they don't attack as much as they did before. So it's a buff, but also a nerf. But overall, it seems like a buff, because you get true sight. I mean, one of the things about adrenaline, right, is that you can't see the enemy hero. Like, you can juke him. Now you can't juke him anymore. If it's like Ravenor's lightning bolt, you're able to dodge it. Oh, you mean like they attack and you can dodge the attacks? They don't give you vision all to themselves. Oh. Let's just see how it is after the patch, right? I mean, I, I haven't tested the change in SPT, so I have no idea. Anyway, Sticky Bomb, magic damage decreased from... Yes, will not make a difference. The problem in laning phase is the bombardment early game. 
it will make a little bit of a difference, of course, but still, the major problem is that whenever you auto attack a bombardier 1v1, you just hit him, you hit him. Like when I played Alonia the other day, right? I was like harassing him to half HP. He pressed W once, hit me twice, and then I was, you know, same HP as four of my spells. So I don't really feel like this will have a major impact. Bomb will still be picked. Bomb's still a great hero. And I feel like they should have hit the bombardment, not the sticky bomb. Uh, the good thing, however, is that he can no longer kill creep waves uh, straight away here with the 340. Like, he can't kill the archer after a certain amount of time, so that's nice. So he actually has to hit the archer now. So that, in that regard, uh, it's a good thing. Bubbles finally getting some nerfs. Cooldown was increased on the Q and the W, which is very important because he could definitely use his spells way too often. They didn't, however, touch the Staff of the Master, which is very interesting. But either way, we'll see if this change has some major impact. It really should have because, well, you know, the cooldowns were jokingly good in this current patch. Now this place a shard cam, irrelevant. Forsaken Archer, attack range decreased from 600 to 550. No longer uses a skeleton to cast Crippling Volley. Now it's a cast action time of 200 and a cast time of 800. Oh, Jesus. Cool on to turn on all levels, immobile restoration change. That's a long cast time, man. God. Alright. Interesting. Attack split line keys from all the attack speed bonus increase from 10 to 25. Oh. Rather need to toggle. Oh. No longer I'm puffing up straight on the fifth, so I'm talking on. Split fire attack has been increased to six. Hmm. Wait, can you jungle Forsaken now? I'm not even kidding. If you buy that item, I, I don't know if they nerfed the Astro item, but if they if they didn't nerf the Astro item, I, I'm pretty sure you can jungle. I mean, you start off with like 60 damage on, on Forsaken Archer, and then you remove 45% of that, and then you're down to 30. I mean, and you hit five heroes at all levels, so it's basically you can kill stacks early, and you can jungle FA. Like, properly jungle her now. I'm intrigued. I want to try this tomorrow. Oh, whenever the patch comes out. Hmm. Interesting. Clanks! Fuck you! I'm gonna be so excited to have you out of my fucking games. What do they do? Mana cost. No longer constant. Thank you. Movement speed. Thank you. Cooldown increased. Thank you. Thank you. Yes! Fa thank you. Fuck you. Now, next hero. <laughs> <sighs> I just had like an incredibly hard game only because they had a Clanks. I know to carry him, we would have won the game in 30 minutes, but it became a one hour game. We won, but still. Mage Pay no longer grants magic armor to Alice or self upon activation. No longer deals magic damage to a nearby enemy hero. Casts a spell. Now passively grants. Whoa. Magic damage is no longer dealt on an area around a target. Not only deals magic damage to the main target, percentage of missing. Okay, so he's a much better single target hero now, and he's a lot harder to kill himself because he doesn't have to flash anymore to get extra magic armor, so. They buffed his uh, getting ganked ability, uh, they nerfed his team ability, and then they increased his single target ability. And you can no longer backdoor with Mage Pain, so Mage Pain's gonna be more of a fighting hero now. I kinda like it. I'm not sure if it's too good, because like, you know, it's... The, the thing about Mage Pain was that you had to always wait for him to blink in, like, uh, to not blink before you attacked him, because if you attacked him after he blinked, it was really hard to kill him. But now they're making him hard to kill at all times. The good thing is now you're forced to skill E instead of stats and then E. So I kind of like that because before you got it with flash for free, then you skill stats, so you had like stats, you had the flash, and killing mage was hard as fuck. Now you actually have to skill E instead of stats, so. Overall, I think it's a good thing for the hero, but we'll see if it's too good. 90% um, level 1 ulti is also incredibly good because, you know, mo mostly you're going to be picking mage pain against... Um, uh, intelligence heavy lineups, and if he does 90% level 1, I mean, like, a witch there has 600 mana, that's, like, a lot, etc. So, yeah, interesting. Okay, we'll see. Moon Queen, damage penalty per bounce increased from uh, 20 to 25%. Bonus space damage lower from... Mm -hmm. Movement speed bonus decreased from 24 to 60 to 20, 40, 40. Max number of times the target can be hit by a moon finale decreased from 5 to 4. Moon Queen getting a few nerfs, I think that's fine. Moon Queen was, is very, very good. One of the best carries in the current patch. People just weren't aware of it. We were. Good hero. Deserved the nerf. Still a very good hero after these nerfs. So I think good. Um, didn't have to, but I think good. Nitro uh, got nerfed again, right? Yeah, so got nerfed again. We must be bound to Nitro. Lose to a serum. Yeah, so Nitro more nerfs. I like it. Tongue Tie is finally getting some love. It's no longer a terrible damage spell. It actually deals quite a bit of damage. Now dies in two hits instead of having health. 
No longer deals splash damage, attack damage reading will increase. Oh damn, that's a big increase. Level 11, 16. Okay, so Poliwag is now a lot better at killing single targets, but worse than in using combinations, and also worse at pushing generally when it comes to um, killing creeps. However, there's a lot more damage than before, but you can't backdoor anymore, so you can't do the restoration double Poliward enemy base anymore in the same way. Overall, I think this is good, but I don't really know why we had to go the route of more single target damage. I mean, Poly can already kill any hero in the game level 6. Now he can guarantee do so. And it gets better late game. At the same time, they nerfed his uh, like you know team fight ability with the ultimate. And what's really good as well is that now now minion heroes can actually counter him. So you can have Keeper and Balfour kill the wards because it's only two hits, and it doesn't splash. So I think it's good buffs and nerfs. Like they buffed slash nerfed it in a smart way. I think so. I, I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this. More so of a single target ganker now though. But the ultimate has such a long cooldown. Hmm. All right, Puppet Show, range decrease from 700 to 600, Amplified Mag Damage Value change from... So I'm going to say this again, this will not change anything. The reason Puppet is OP is because the ultimate has zero cast time. You walk up to someone, you shroud, you hit your auto, and while your auto is in the air, you press R and boom, instant someone's dead. And also the fact that they changed the Puppet to find a new target is why Puppet's OP. What you did here, it's not going to change anything. Puppet's still going to be OP. I'm sorry. So don't agree with these changes. It's not what making him OP, so... Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I don't understand this. Now, this one is very interesting. Pyro, one of my personal favorite heroes of all time, one of my best 1v1 heroes as well, is getting a lot of love. Once again, a hero that has been able to be played as a support, mostly played as a support by Sync Esports with Insania, is now... Uh, getting some semi-carry love in the same way as some other support heroes have gotten. So, the damage from the wave is increased, the range is increased in the way of Dota, so you can't dodge Phoenix Wave anymore. It's, it was impossible. So Pyro's actually inc insane in mid lane now. It's going to be freaking insane. And then they increased the stun duration on W, but lowered the damage. So you cannot uh, two-shot creep waves anymore with your wave and your stun, but at the same time you got a longer stun duration, you got a longer range, and then your Q got buffed at the same time. So I honestly think that with all these changes, Pyro's gonna be OP. Looking at the attack speed per charge increase from E as well has been heavily buffed. The cast speed has been heavily buffed. No burning, sure, but I mean, like, this hero looks fucking crazy on paper. And I think Pyro's gonna be picked, yeah, every game. <laughs> I believe this is gonna be the new bomb. Honestly, Pyro is probably one of the heroes that can beat bomb now with these changes. Um... Personally, I think it's too much. I like the QW. I don't feel like they needed to increase the fervor. At the same time, they nerfed the ultimate damage a little bit, but that doesn't make a difference because at the same time, they they, they buffed the cooldown, which I like. I like the fact that they buffed the cooldown, but all of this together just makes Pyro OP. So I personally think like Pyro is going to be the new bomb, going to be in every game, and the hero is just incredibly insane after these changes. More so going to be built as a semi-carry, so the PK shrunken sheep build is even more important now. And yeah, no, I, the hero is going to be insane. I don't have much else to say. Hero's gonna be OP. Rampage, cooldown increased. Good, I hate Rampage for moving from the game. Ravenor is finally getting his attack speed uh, buff back from W, uh, which I like because Ravenor has been pretty unplayable recently. So I agree with that. Um, next up, Rhapsody got some love. I don't really understand why Rhapsody ha was and has been and is one of the best support heroes of all time. Always always have been so why would you need to buff her more they increase the heal on w which I, do, I don't approve of at all increases her ability to push increases the team fight ability and not only that they added cast speed globally with her e so now comboing her with other heroes is actually incredibly insane imagine pyro and rhapsody in the same team 80 cast speed on top of 80 cast speed crazy like so blinkin W, Q, ult, boom. Like, crazy. Yeah, no. I do not see the reason for this at all. I kind of like the unique ability Rhapsody had before with the lifesteal. I think that was pretty cool. And I don't really understand why this was necessary. Um, either way, magic armor penetration and Caspi globally now. So, yeah, Rhapsody went from being a top tier support to OP as well. I believe Rhapsody is going to be one of the most picked supports. We are in Thailand, though. Thailand has never liked Rhapsody, so we'll see what they do. But yeah, I completely disagree with this change as well.
Well, both of them. Bensington, been one of the most annoying and OP heroes now for quite some time and got had a 100% win in Thailand, pretty much. Uh, sorry, in the World Finals, uh, pretty much. Um, cooldowns got increased and damage got lowered a bit. Hero's still going to be picked. I like this. The, like, the, the fact that Bensington could get out three or even four stuns sometimes in team fights was way too much. So I like the fact that they increased the stun. I don't feel like they needed to reduce the magic damage, however, that it does. I think that is a little bit too much. Uh, Lance along from 10 to 14 is fine too. You pretty much never used uh, um, two, two uh, Ws in a row, so I think that's fine. Uh, but yeah, I don't think they needed to increase the dam uh, reduce the damage on Q. Um, overall, the hero will still be picked due to the global ability in the same way of a Sandwraith, except that Bensonton is actually good in lane, can lane, can gank, Sand Sandwraith cannot. So I still think Bensonton will be played, he would just won't be OP anymore. So I like this, Bensonton should be balanced now, but that's the thing. Right now, the meta in Han is picked the OP heroes, so I don't feel like Benstone will be played as much after these changes due to his... he won't be OP anymore. Uh, either way, Hag, range decrease from 550 to 500. I think that's fine. Hag's a, a good hero. Not OP, not underpowered. I think it's good. So, yeah. Um, okay, new concealable item, rejuvenation potion. I don't really feel like anyone's ever going to buy this unless you're... Like, it's 400 gold, man. That's two creep waves. Well, one and a half. This will only be bought if you're pushing and you're afraid of buybacks and you'll buy it in order to stay in lane and push the rack. So I like the idea of the item, but it will only be used late game. When you're pushing and you're afraid of buybacks, you'll buy it and then you'll go push the tower. And if they buy back, you'll be full HP, full mana. So overall, decent item, but due to the cost, it will only and only be purchased by mid players and carries very late game when pushing against buybacks. Sand Scepter, target an ally or self to dispel debuffs or target an enemy to dispel their buffs and immobilize them for two seconds. Enemies are also revealed and cited for the duration, aka anti Nighthound, for example. Uh, I think it's a very uh, interesting item idea. It gives 25 intelligence, 5 agility, 5 strength. It's going to be a support item. Think of it as a, um, uh, as a Storm Spirit, um, except you can actually use it to counter cheap sticks and stuff. So actually, it's a very good concept because... The thing about Storm Spirit, right? Uh, sorry, about No Fire Blade is that it was mostly a carry item, or in very rare cases you had to buy it on a support to remove the Sheepstick. Now that you actually have an item to remove Sheepstick, and at the same time you can also perch an enemy and immobilize them for two seconds. So I personally love this item. I think it's going to be great, and I think it's going to be used a lot, especially by supports in the later stages of the game, to counter Sheeps and to dispel whatever the enemy has. So I love the idea of this item. Uh, it's very cheap. Very, very cheap, so it might be a little bit too strong, um, but we'll see. Overall, great idea. Love it. think it's going to be used a lot. Uh, yeah, exactly. Sand Scepter is pretty much better than Null Fire Blade now. Um, either way. All right, next. Remove the concept of attack modifiers from the... What? That is um, interesting. Once again, I don't know, know the reasoning of this. I mean, I, I like the fact that you couldn't combine Shieldbreaker and Frostwolf because on some heroes that would be pretty OP. Um, but okay. I don't really know what to comment on this. We'll see when it gets into the game, but I mean, let's take an example. Um, uh, Let's do Malakin, for example. Malakin is a hero that when you do the battle build, right? You always buy Shieldbreaker. And if you were, if you if you could, you would buy Frostwolf because it gives you HP, it gives you slow, it gives you the aura, and it gives you everything you need. The thing is, you've never been able to buy it, so instead you've had to do it with a Symbol of Rage. Now you can actually buy a Frostwolf. You can even buy a Shieldbreaker Frostwolf and a Symbol of Rage. And that, for me, is very, very dumb. Same thing with Puppet, it's a physical, well actually Puppet's a bad idea, let's do, um, I don't know, Soul Stealer. Shield Breaker is amazing on Soul Stealer, but the thing about that is that you've never been able to buy Shield Breaker because you need to go Geo's Frostwolf to tank up. So if you go to Shield Breaker build, you're not tanky enough, now you can do both of them at the same time. So you go Frostburn into Shield Breaker, for example. Just Valkyrie, another great, uh, great hero for it. You always buy either a Shield Breaker or you buy Frostburn, now you can buy both of them. So now you can go Geo, Frostwolf, Shieldbreaker on Valkyrie, and then Wingbow or Rift Shards, whatever. 
I personally am not a fan of this at all. I think it's gonna break some heroes and some carries and make them too good and just overall change the game in a way that I don't think is good. <clears throat> um, yeah, okay, all right. Uh, next up, Abyssal Skull. Remove the two health region, lower the base damage. So they're, bo they're nerfing team items, that's fine. Lock on the mana cost, okay. Don't care, mana cost reduced, sure. Oh. Wait, you can have two astrolabes? Does this 100 health get cancelled? No, right? So it now heals 250 instead of 200, but it's over 10 seconds. So you can have two astrolabes? Oh, sorry, increased base damage, sorry. Uh, increased base damage. I'm okay with it regardless, uh, that's fine. I will upload it to YouTube, Yuko. You can have five, so you can actually buy two assets. Okay, interesting. Huh. Okay. Um, barbed armor now passively gives fifteen damage and fifteen strength for two thousand gold. Are you? F All right. This is the first change that is completely and utterly retarded. Like I'm not even. So now you can get 15 strength, which is basically a mighty blade, but better. 15 damage, and you get the barbed. <laughs> this item will be the new item to buy on every strength hero, and I'm not kidding. Like, you know, you've always bought in Sanitarius on, on, uh, on, on your strength carries. Because it's a very good item, it gives you tankiness, it gives you attack speed, it gives you damage. Now you can pay 2,000 gold instead of 3,000 to get 30 damage on a strength hero, and no one can hit you for 4 seconds. I, I don't understand this at all. This actually annoys me quite a bit. Like, th this is completely... No, it doesn't give any inter armor. It doesn't it doesn't make a difference? Sure, it doesn't give any intelligence. Sure, it doesn't give any armor. But it makes strength carries incredibly OP mid game. Oh, okay. Like it, it, it makes strength carries unkillable mid game because no one can target them. Like, think you have to focus a strength carry mid game because late game they're gonna get they're gonna get too good, right? So mid game that's when you focus them before they get shrunken, before they get big items. Now they just get a barb and you can't hit them for five seconds. The new item purchases and counters it, yes, but the new item is, is to be bought on a support hero, not on... Okay, we'll see how it works out, okay? But, like, you basically pay 2,000 gold for no one to hit you for 5 seconds, and it's amazing on a strength hero. Uh, how many changes do I have left? Fuck, I mean, uh, sorry, it's scrim time, so that's why um, we're queuing. Uh, we don't have a scrim right now. Bubbles. I mean, mute the uh, in-game sounds. Cersei. Um, Shy cut. Okay, brutalizer. Recipe cost increased from 800. Total cost reduced from 50. Strength one reduced from 10 to 8. That's fine. Cooldown reduced from 10 to 1 second. Interesting. That allows for a lot of toggles during team fights. I think that's fine. No longer gives 5 health regen. Now it gives 10% lifesteal. Lifesteal modifier. Crazy, but lifesteal reduced from 25 to 20. Okay. Uh, Energizer bonus moves to speed from. If I'm not commenting, it's because it's whatever. Uh, bonus movement speed boost now tapers from 75 to 0 instead of 75 to 25. Duration increase from 6 to 10. Okay, no longer fast cooldown state effect. Allies. So once again, you can use two Energizers. Mana cost reduced from 75 to 25. All right, this actually makes Energizer viable again. The reason Energizer stopped getting picked was because the mana cost was too high and the stats you got for it wasn't good enough. Now that it's 10 seconds instead of 6, it might actually be viable to buy again. So I do believe we're going to see an Energizer on every team again now. Which I think is perfectly fine. Um, uh, hmm. what? Um, okay, uh, Firebrand. Uh, movement speed bonus increased by 2% per level. Frost with mana cost reduced. Genjiro mana cost reduced. They're, they're buffing a lot of mana costs on pretty much every item. See? 
Jammers from 165 to 50. That's a huge change, dude. That's a huge change. Why are they buffing mana costs on every hero? Another change that doesn't really... Um, Um, hmm. All right, I, I would like to. I'm gonna ask Frostburn what the, what the reasoning is behind buffing mana cost on every hero and nerfing the mana. Uh, sorry, buffing the mana, like reducing the mana cost on every item. That's intriguing to me. A health potion not only dispels from damage by a non lane creep unit, which means you can use health potion while jungling. Uh, sorry, well, while uh, in the lane and you're running away, you can use health potion and you can run back. I think that's Scout a fine him and route him. Down from 120 to 90 seconds. Thank you, Angle Seaver, for 25 months of subbing. I appreciate that a lot, man. Thank you very much. Uh, which means you can use it in lane. You cannot use it in the jungle, which is good. If, if you did, then it would be OP. Cast down decrease from 200 to 0. Oh, so Logris is now instant. Wait one second. Just got to pick my hero. My mistake. Um, I don't know what am I playing? God damn it. I don't know what I want to play. I'm just going to pick the thing then, whatever. Uh, okay, next up Luminous Prism. Cost reduced a little bit. One intelligence gone. Mana potion, same thing. Mary Spawning now is an active effect which consumes all the charges for the gold value. Same effect as if you kill the creep. Gold charges increase from 9 to 10. No longer amount of games when you come out. Okay, cool, though. Okay. Minor totem decrease from 53 to 50, so you can buy it in the beginning in the same way as before. And no fire blade, no longer able to purchase. So this is a very big one. This basically nerfs the item for all invisible heroes, such as Nighthound and other heroes that buys it in order to purchase dust off themselves with Shroud or other invisible items. So I think that's uh, I think that's fine. No fire has been one of the best items in the game for a very very long time, so I don't mind it getting a small nerf. Uh, Play the greatest buff duration increase from 30 to 60. Jesus. Here armor bonus from the buff state and another buff bonus. Double six and 40. For the first 10 seconds of the fight. Damn. No mana cost. Again, no mana cost. Okay. And post haste, mana cost. <laughs> That's actually insane. Play the greaves, once again, I've said it many times, but if Thai people don't pick up on buying this item now, I'm going to get mad. I've said so long that play the greaves is one of the best items in the game. You got to buy it and. Yeah, now even more so. It bo boosts buff uh, pushing a lot early game. Uh, pause cap. Um, song minute net. The song net tea cap. Um, okay. Next up. Let's see if they're pausing. Uh, cost decrease from 185 to 165. Oh, interesting. Bonus mana regeneration increase from 150 to 200. No longer applies a cooldown state. Same here. You can have two ring of sorceries now. Once again, a mana buff. Buff duration increases 45 to 60. Armor bonus, the same thing. It's uh, play the greatest. Fiscal proc damage increase from 120 to 140. Shaman's head risk. Bonus health regeneration increase from 9 to 10. Now also passively grants 50% DOF when stuck. Whoa. Okay. I don't know if Shaman's needed that buff, but that's interesting. Makes it a very strong item now. And certain uh, tanky heroes. Um, uh, okay, Shieldbreaker, damage decreased, thank god, armor decreased, thank god, alright, so Shieldbreaker is now actually not an OP item anymore, it's back to its original state, I think that's fine, Shieldbreaker's been the best damage item early in mid-game for a long time now, so this is good, allows the Frostburn to actually come back into the meta, because now Frostburn is actually viable again, because Shieldbreaker is an OP, oh, like in comparison, and max number from 8 to 6, okay, Drunken Head, whoa! 10 to 7, no longer loses duration and cooldown. So Shrunken Head, an untouched item for like 8 years, in, except the shard, like, yeah, it's overall. Damn, okay, I like it. Shrunken is the most OP item in Dota and in Han, and has always been. The fact that it's getting a nerf, I'm very happy to see. Um, I think that's very good, and I'm excited to see how this actually changes the game. Cooldown reduced, uh, but 7 seconds, massive now, okay. I like it. No longer rebuy shrunken and have like a long shrunken late game. I think it's really good. You can actually like buy couriers with sheeps and stuff now. Changes the game a little bit. Snake bracelet cost reduced. Wait, does that mean wing bows reduced as well? The damn. The... No, okay, okay. 
Uh, cooldown reduced, you can play, no longer applies cooldowns. Yeah, once again, two mana rings. Uh, yeah, one second, finish uh, patch. <laughs> Wait, let me just buy items. Sorry, stream. I didn't expect us to, the patch analysis to take so long this time. Uh, so that's my bad. Gonna, oh, I can't give him a half potion. Damn it. Uh, okay. Spike to Bola, mana cost once again zero. Spell center damage per second reduced from 500% to 5% of current health. Uh, debuff now reduces health regeneration by 50%. Interesting. Um, okay. Tablet of armor, bonus armor increase from 2 to 3. Tablet of armor, nice. Veiled rot, moment speed, 15 to 20. Okay, one more pause, please. Yes, finish video. Ooh. Uh, life reduced from 20 to 15. No longer grants a dominant creep 50 move speed. Instead, no grants a dominant creep bonus of 25% of your damage and move speed. Oh, cool. Uh, mana cost reduced from 75 to 25. All right. The recipe change to include another steam staff. Full recipe is not dense, but plus snake blade plus 2x steam staff. Oh, so you can split it. Okay. Total cost increased from 5,900 to 5,900. Overall, I like some item changes. I don't like others. I've commented on the ones that actually matter. Some, some... Some items I just don't have any comment on, and there's a lot of things changing in the game. As you can see, they're they're um, they're buffing mana costs. They are making you being able to buy double astro, double mana ring again. So they're changing a lot of things in the game. Um, for the better, for the worse, we'll see. To be honest, um, I've given my opinions about heroes, so and that's really what matters, of course. And the gold per minute was the major changes. So once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed this patch analysis. Uh, you missed barrier. Oh. Where the hell's barrier? On B, I assume. Oh, fuck. Ah! Uh, okay, we're gonna have to jungle here while doing the last one. Professional YouTuber right here. Move from the support section to the protect section of item professionals. Replace the to total cost for this Five to all stats. Oh, five to all stats. Okay. Uh, no longer grants that health regeneration. Aura now also passively grants thirty percent. Wait, to everyone or just to yourself? 30% debuff, mana cut, mana cut reduced once again. No longer, now also passive grants 30% debuff and stun duration. Is that for everyone's stream? Or is that just for the guy carrying the barrier? Carolina, very good to see you. Hello, how are you doing? Pontus doesn't care about chat anymore. Sorry, I was doing a patch analysis, dude. I have to focus. So let me finish up this video as soon as you guys, uh, not an aura, only on yourself. Okay, that's very interesting, actually. I don't know, I kind of like it. Like, I think it's, I don't know. I kind of like that. Like, it makes shamans a very strong item on, um, like, individual heroes. Like, it will be more value to buy it now on, um, uh, like, certain, like, shamans as well, right? So, the thing is, like, Helm has been such a dominant item, of, like, for early survivability, and now they're actually making shamans a pretty decent item early game for yourself as well, and not only for teammates. So no, I, I kind of like it, to be honest. Uh, it might be a little bit too much. 30% is quite kind of heavy. It's like a pebbles, really. So I think it's a little bit too much, to be honest. Um, but we'll see, ultimately, how it does work out. But it does seem on, oh, fuck me. On paper, that's a little bit too much. Um, hey, Audi, Audi. All right, I'm going to kill this guy. I take him here. Go, go, go. Bye, bye. OK. Never mind. You kill him without me. Uh, all right, so yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this patch analysis. I hope you've enjoyed. This will be on YouTube, of course, and it was live stream on twitch.tv slash slapped, where I stream every single day except Saturday, so don't forget to tune into my stream. So once again, guys, thank you for watching on YouTube, and thank you for watching on my Twitch chat. I'm going to get back to my Thai Man uh, New Illusion TMM now. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube, and peace out.